Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Bible Time. <clears throat> Today we're going to be in John 19. Jesus. Sentence to be crucified. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed them in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look! I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and, and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid and went back inside to the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered. You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who has handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Arabic is Gaboritha. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away! <clears throat> Take him away and crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar! The chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Crucifixion. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out of the place of the skull, which in Arabic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side of Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fasted to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Arabic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest of the Jews protested to Pilate. Do not write the king of the Jews. 
but that this man claims. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Do not write king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be it. <clears throat> Do not write king of the Jews. Write that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided it into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, was seamless woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened so that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clops, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here's your son. And the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her to be into his home. The death of Jesus. Later, knowing that all was now completed and that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus. And then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. And they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with his spear, <clears throat> bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture said, they will look on the one that they have pierced. burial of Jesus. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jews, with Pilate's permission, he came 
and took the body away, he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of mirth and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. <sighs> Aloe and myrrh. <sighs> At the place where Jesus was crucified, where there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The empty tomb. <clears throat> Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind them, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She said, Sir, if you've carried him away, <clears throat> tell me where you put him, and, and I'll go get him. Jesus said to Mary, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in error, Rabboni! Which means, teacher, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the, to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord. 
And she told them that he had these things. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Jesus appears to the disciples on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now, Thomas, called Demas, one of the twelve, was not with it was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So, the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, then I, I won't believe. Then, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me and you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. Jesus did many other miracles, miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This has been Bible Talk.